<laughs> all right, all right. Uh, welcome to another talk of sand again. Yeah, bare bottoms know. and sand. And You're gonna hear the whole journey though this time. Hey, give a you got to give Jeffrey Crupper his uh, proper introduction here. Oh, what's up, YouTube? Oh, there it is. I almost missed <laughs> yeah, it. I almost all missed right. it. I almost missed it. Thanks, Jeffrey. Uh, all right, Keep cool. It straight. All right, so we're going to talk about the last like year of lessons that we've learned about barrel bottoms, about sand. We kind of covered it last week a little bit, man, but not like the way you're going to see here. You yeah. can see the journey now. I'm going to show you some of the videos of it. Mm. Uh, I'm going to tell you what I would never do again, what I might do again, uh, how I would change it, uh, and I don't know, some humbling experiences that you just learn as you go and, and you share. I'm on both sides of the fence still, but I've got reasons why to be on both sides of the bare bottom versus sand fence. Okay, so first uh, thing you're gonna see here today is uh, a little bit of the journey of this tank, uh, being the 360 at my house. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I got some starter corals in it like uh, a day yesterday? ago. Yesterday? Yesterday. Yeah. Uh, I got a little video of them this morning. They don't look so good because they were just, I turned on the lights and I had to shoot the video and come here. <laughs> so uh, like they, uh, they were looking really good last night. So uh, I'll, I'll shoot them again on Facebook probably yeah. this evening when they're all open. Nice. Uh, but. Uh, yeah, you're gonna see that. And then we're gonna share each of us. I don't know what his are. I don't know what yours are. The top 10 lessons that we've learned in the last year. Last year. About sand yeah. and bear bottoms. So well, I'm, I'm specifically looking at things that change my mind. Sand, bear bottom, and that ugly stage. Mm -hmm. That's what I, I've, I have all three of those. Okay, yeah, I'm in that mix too, Okay. right? Okay. So how does all this stuff work? Uh, and I, I think you're going to be kind of surprised where this journey goes uh, because I was. I just think it's amazing that here we, here we are, you're 16, 17 years later, you know, I'm coming up on a decade and just in the last year, there's so much we learned that who would have even thought? You know what it is though, man, it's like uh, I could make a mean rack of ribs or bake a mean cake. Right. Right. Uh, but man, you'll never stop learning uh, about oh, how yeah. to tweak that barbecue and like, you know, how much salt, when, uh, you know, to mm -hmm. change things. Mm -hmm. And like, you make one little tweak to the whole thing, you know, you decide to not do the, like, uh, what's the Texas wrap or the, whatever it's the called. The Texas crutch. The crutch. And I was saying, <laughs> now it's a whole new skill set. Yeah. And like, cause it will dry out quick. Yeah. You know, so it's a totally different thing. and. Just like your reef tank, you change that environment, just one little thing, and all of a sudden, man, oh my gosh, I didn't think I knew all these, you know, I just learned so much new stuff. Yeah, and hopefully that change, making those changes don't go the opposite way where, oh man, I guess uh, I'm going to fail. But I learned, from, say, but I learned actually, from something from it. Actually, the moment that if you were using the Texas crutch your whole time, and then the moment you don't use it the first time, you're probably going to fail. <laughs> it's, it won't be as good as the last time. You're going to have to learn how to do it right. Uh -huh. uh, all right. So anyway, so these are the things uh, where we're going to show the tank here. You're going to see a little bit of progression of it. Uh, I just zoomed through all my 8 million photos on my phone, so I didn't find the per perfect ones. But you'll get to see generally where it goes. <laughs> so we'll see that first one. All right. So this is what the bare bottom tank looks like in my house, right? So, you know, looks sharp. The lights aren't on yet. I don't even think we have the lights installed yet. Uh, but uh, oh, I see. This is pretty old school. Yeah. So it's bare bottom, ago. super clean on the bottom. Yeah. I don't know. It's kind of missing something though. Still, uh, it's uh, the rock looks fine here, but we the again, aquascape looks awesome. We haven't turned the lights on. Uh, and so, I think this thing will back up a little bit, and you'll be able to see it, uh, the whole tank again here. But. Uh, if not, we'll just start it back over again. Can you start it back over again? It'll, It'll loop. loop back right through. Yep. All right, I don't know how long this one is. Uh, this one we're actually showing the little aquascape that I built uh, yeah. for, the, for the fish. Uh, to. But like know, even with ambient light, you see on the far left there, a little bit of brown on some of the main aquascape. Um, but I would say, you know, visually, this is a this is appealing, you know, from the uh, distance. For me, the, bottom, the bare bottom hasn't... Uh, hasn't got coralline or ugly detritus or patches of this, that black and white contrast of the rock, uh, it looks good to me. Yeah. But down mm -hmm. the road, maybe not so down much. Down the road, I don't know. Is it possible to start this over? No? Oh, uh, it'll bring yes. it back to us and all right, go there back we go. to it. There we go. There we go. Uh, all right, so, 
Oh, this is actually a good shot of it too. <laughs> all, right, all right, all right. Well, so there you go. Now you can see it once the lights are turned on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And this is what the bare bottom looks. I I can't help it. There's all kinds of good reasons as to have the bare bottom long term. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't look as good to me. Yeah. And, and we're gonna show the sand in a minute. So I can't wait to hear what everybody has to think. It, definitely give us a vote. Sand, no sand, as as you see this evolve, right? But you're starting to see all the gunk on the rock as well. This is that bare bottom, not really stable, yeah. no sand, sterile, we dry rock. We expected this. We fully expected this environment given what we've learned over the last three, four years of bare bottom tanks. Okay, I expected what you see today right here. I did not expect to see what comes, uh, which is now, let's go into it like a week or two later or whatever it was. Now, this mm. was nowhere near as bad as it actually was. And I wish I would have got photos of it. Oh, this all was probably time, before you blew some of the rocks and stuff off? Oh, no, like this is pretty early on. This is the bacterial bloom that happened okay. in, in this tank. And it was triple bad this at, at one point and green mm. with both of the UVs on. There's no way it was like phytoplankton bloom, yeah. man. Not with those both those UVs on that way. Oh, uh, one of them turned the water over twenty every twenty minutes or so, and the other one higher power. I don't know. And also, it would go away at night and come back during the day. So almost certainly, photosynthetic, uh, to some yeah, photosynthetic dyno mm -hmm. or something like. I uh, I don't I don't know. Interesting. Yeah, but it was especially with the UVs on. The bloom, man, this is a ongoing thing with uh, dry rock bare bottom tanks. Is that bad? Oh, yeah, ebb and bloom. flow, ebb and flow. Yeah. In this case, though, even UV wouldn't solve it, which is one of the only places, that, uh, instances I've seen this. Yeah. And I've, this has got the UV of Mega. <laughs> Two times. Yeah, uh, the Mega installation. Yeah. All right, so now let's look at what it really starts to look like terrible. And I wish I had a better video of this again, but. Now the rock is just covered in gook. Yeah. Like, and it's not necessarily cyano. It's not necessarily dinos. No, it's just like this thick, like turfy gook everywhere. And the, it's on the bottom. Yep. It's all over the rock. It's everywhere, man. It's, it's the worst I've ever seen in any of my tanks. An ugly stage to me. Yeah. And it's actually, it was at points where worse than you see in the camera because Sometimes you don't want to film your shame in its entirety. <laughs> uh, but, like, it, this this doesn't look good to me by any stretch of the imagination. All right. So one of the new new things that shows up, though, mm -hmm. is at one point, like, I share on Facebook, and I'm like, hey, man, we got, like, a coral and algae growing fast. Right. Right. right, right, like, right. Oh, cool, man. Like, hmm. And then and I was like, kind of looks turfy, though, and it kind of looks like, like, it's not, not cyan. It's not calcareous. Yeah, yet. It's, it's not hard yeah, though. Yeah, yeah. And I went to like blow it off with the turkey baster or the peam up, and it wouldn't come off. Mm -hmm. So I've never seen cyan, or then didn't come off. Well, and, right? it's, and it's that color of cyan too. So mm -hmm. it's that purpley, deep purple kind of color. Like a really awesome color of coralline. Yeah. Or closer to cyan though. Yeah, what, but what not blowing it? off. Really weird. Okay, so I didn't get a chance to share this on Facebook, and I meant to, but you get to see it today. I actually got an email from uh, Sean over at LG Barn mm -hmm. uh, that it, he told me what it was. And so, if, for those who don't know, I used uh, the like double helix, like uh, coralline algae uh, yeah. both uh, the like bottles? additive. Yeah, the I used two both different of them. ones. Yeah. And he contacted the guy that runs that company and emailed me uh, through that. And what it is is uh, he says, I'll, I'll, "I'll give you a brief uh, overview of this. We use." Lithophilium is one of our species of coralline algae. It's an intense light-loving species, and its color pigmentation is one of the brightest of all species. Short answers here. Uh, I might actually cut and paste this out, and I'll post it on Facebook. Oh, yeah. Or even maybe in the comments on YouTube, actually, yeah, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is, short answer is, is it's a type of coralline algae, but damage. I'm, I'm going to read this out, as nerdy as it is. Okay. Uh, the the uh, colored patches are all over the... or. The colored patches all over the organic structures, much like human tissues, called uh, central medullary cells that are inside the primary cell walls, or PCWs for short. These uh, cell walls are calcified secondary cell walls, but now they've switched over to PCWs to repair the cell walls that were damaged during the cultivation process. It's like blood, uh, white blood cells uh, trying to uh, heal a cut in a human. They'll repair the cellular wall damage that uh, caused them. Then they will draw magnesium from the water and revert back to secondary cells. And in short, it's damage, cellular damage mm, to uh, the coralline. coralline algae that will do one of two things. 
it will pull magnesium from the water and given stable parameters will rebuild that structure and then calcify and then go back to secondary wall cells mm -hmm. and then, or it'll just disappear. Or just appear. So short of all the nerdy talk, it was coralline algae in there. And you'll see it here in just this video. So you can watch this now. This was coralline algae in, in the tank. It was just damaged coralline algae mm. that is either going to turn into coralline algae or fade away. Or just fade away because it is unable to repair but, its cellular walls. Now, can you see how you could easily confuse this with cyano? The yeah. only thing is it does not blow off in the bacterial growth sheets that okay. cyano does. Once it grew that fast, I'm like, I knew for sure it wasn't coralline algae, right? Uh, and in the, when I first saw it, it was just like little bits of it on the rock, and that's where I thought it was. Yeah. I wouldn't have made mistake this necessarily. But in fact, well, now that I say that, it's coralline algae. I, I would have missed, I mistaked it. Yeah. Wrong. <laughs> and some people might actually scrub some of this off thinking it's something. So you can scrub it off with a toothbrush. Yeah. I found that much out, but you can't blow it off. It's really on there. But now that you know, now that we know. So lithophilium. It's lithophilium and it's damaged and eventually it will repair itself or disappear. So okay. this will be coralline or it'll not exist anymore. So I uh, learned something new. Every mm -hmm. last day. I mean, like, it's so cool that Sean emailed, saw this and emailed it to me. <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, so now it's got coralline algae in this thing, but the tank is still just like so unstable, man. And mm. uh, Sean sends me a couple of different things. Right? Oh, yeah. So uh, I've never been big, I'm going to be honest about it. I've never been big about buying copepods in a jar uh, oh. because I have never seen a tank that doesn't eventually get Just get them out the of thin air. Yeah. Uh, you get them out of thin air, right? Okay, hold that thought real quick. Okay. Harkins Aquatics, just to stick on this uh, damaged, da uh, damaged cellular walls, he asked, do you think it was damaged from the UV? I'm not intelligent enough to tell you the answer to that. If I, I would just guess. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It was, no, there, in, it was there in such force, well, though. Well, maybe, man, but I, I know it now. I turned the UV off when I dumped that stuff in because the instructions said to do yeah, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, I mean, maybe a later date, but when I dumped it in, I left the UV off for a couple of weeks. I also took out the the roller mat so the little spores and stuff wouldn't get stuck in yep, the roller like mat. like they recommend. Yeah, uh, so... Just, I mean, that's an interesting theory, but I don't know. Somewhat, it's, it's too, what it looks like is the process, some of the natural process of lithophilium. Yep. Okay. All right. So. Copepods. Copepods. They come out of thin air. They, they come out of thin air. They have in all my tanks. Okay. I read a story like where Eric Borman, uh, like used to be a, a real big in our hobby, mm -hmm. uh, did uh, uh, like a, he autoclaved a whole bunch of tanks to do a salt uh, like uh, experiment. Oh, yeah. You know, autoclave, I don't know exactly to do, but they sterilize a the tank in like 8 million degree oven or something. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And all the tanks develop copepods in them. Mm. Just from instant ocean and uh, water, man, tap water. It's got to come from somewhere. I don't know where they come out from. I can, uh, who knows, man? But uh. like, if you put a coral in your tank, you're probably going to get a copepod. Yeah. Uh, and then they'll, then they'll more. replicate. I think it's hard. You, I think it would be more difficult to keep copepods out of your tank than it would be to introduce them. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but that said, man. Will they help prevent problems? Because mm. we've talked a lot about how they're like a part of the cleanup crew. They're really going to graze uh, yeah, the yeah, surface yeah. of the rock. Some eat detritus, yep. and some are photosynthetic also. And yeah, it's, I believe well, not, that. No, no, not those. I believe the I believe phyto. that they're on the surface of the rock, munching away at all the tiny little bits of algae before you can see it. Oh yeah. So herbivores and none. In a brand new sterile tank. I don't know the right day to add them in there, but I, mm. as long as it's not going to kill your pocketbook, I'm going to switch, man. I, I think I would actually add these things. Like right up front? Yep. I would add these so things. Maybe when you add your, your utilitarian fish, then at the same time, copepods. This, this is why, actually. Okay. Look at this. He sent me this. So that's six jars. Yeah. Uh-uh. 18, dude. Oh, yeah? Yeah, That's, 18 jars. 18 no, jars no, no, no. was it 18? It was 12. I okay. Remember. Somewhere. 16. 16 a high, jars. A, a high number. It was 16 jars of these things we put in there. Yeah. And you know why? Uh, is because I've already got a problem. It's that ounce of, uh, ounce of prevention versus oh, okay. pound of cure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's too much food and gunk in here now 
to be able to uh, solve this issue. Yeah. Right? Uh, so now that I have all this gunk, there's plenty of food for them, by the way. Uh, so they'll replicate probably very fast. <laughs> uh, but now I'm going to have to add a lot more pound to cure versus uh, ounce effort. He also sent this other stuff with, uh, which was called uh, PS, a PNS Pro, Pro Bio. Bio. I'd never heard of it before, but it's you can go read about it. But essentially, it's a bacteria yep. that uh, will Phototrophic. Help, help you, uh, you know, cycle the tank. So, you know, build out the whole mm -hmm. bacterial balance in your tank. All right. So here's one of the problems that I ran into. So. I'm starting, you know, you, you just go back to your bag of tricks, you know, of like, right. uh, all right, this isn't going the way I wanted. Remember how he solved it with, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, Vibrant? Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, Like, all right, let's try some Vibrant. Whew, holy cow, does that work, man. <laughs> uh, so I dumped some Vibrant in, and all of a sudden, all the stuff is very clearly dying on the rocks, right? right? yeah. And then I did the second dose uh, a week later. Yeah. And uh, now it's all like slothing off of <laughs> the rocks. You probably burn through yeah. toilet paper rolls. Wh whatever's in there, man, <laughs> like just slothing off. And I'm like, I grab my peam up and I go in there and I start blowing it off. And I'm like, oh my God, there's rock again. Yeah. All right, underneath all this garbage. <laughs> and so I'm like, oh, you know what, man, I'm going to spend the next hour and I'm just going to just clean the whole damn thing. Yeah. I'm not scrubbing it or anything. I'm just blowing it off with the peam up. Water turns like a toilet. <laughs> you know, it's just so, so, so bad water. But the roller mats rolling right out and uh, working just as intended. Stinks like all hell. Mm. And now, can you show actually uh, this fish here? Tomorrow, okay, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to go call, tell, or call Ellie and tell him how good the tank looks. Except for, this is actually a picture of it today. But if you can see that Auntie in the middle, right he's got Popeye. Yeah. I'm like, man, what the hell? So now... I'd never had a tank, uh, a fish with Popeye that looks so painful. I feel like such a terrible, terrible pet owner every so, time I see him. So timeline-wise, uh, you're looking at the Popeye today where you have sand and stuff in there. But timeline-wise, it was uh, saw the brown stuff, even more brown stuff, UVs are running, uh, kick the UVs off, put Vibrant in, put second dose Vibrant in, brown stuff is sloughing off, it clears the tank, but now the tank is so mucky and murky and dirty and nasty for about a day that this but it's getting better by the end of that day. this fish might have caught he said like some in, uh, had a scratch or something and some infection or what have you yeah so that's what elliot told me is that he probably had a little nick in his eye or something and then that overwhelming that amount dirty. of gunk that was in the water infected it yeah yeah, yeah. so we're working on trying to solve it and every time i see it man it kills me and like it's one of those things like i don't, I don't want to show my shame you know, <laughs> I, I don't know it's really I feel so bad about the whole thing. But what was so, his? Uh, this is it was a catalyst, though. What was his solution? It was like injecting some of the, its food with mm. uh, antibiotic type stuff. Cata uh, something from Sea Camp. Oh, somebody who Cat, just help. Somebody us. will say it. Cata uh, mycin. Cata. Is it Cooper? Not Cooper. No, it's Cata. No, K A T A something. Or okay. Another. Somebody uh, put, put that in the comments. Yeah. And so the way he said to use it is you can mix it with Focus and some other food, and it turns into these like white chunks, and he, he'll eat it. But his uh, like elite little method is actually to take like a syringe from your Aptasia X or maybe even your like your uh, uh, like Salifert yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. like test kit. Mm -hmm. Hopefully now the chemical in it. Uh, mix up the cat or whatever it's called yeah. with water. Yeah. Suck it up in there, and then squirt it into a little teeny Canaplex. bit. Canaplex. Yeah. Yes. Into the vein area of a table shrimp. So freeze the table shrimp so there's no parasites on it. Thaw it. And then where the vein used to be, is kind of squirt this stuff in mm. there. And something like the uh, uh, anthea that's that big will actually go gobble that whole thing up. Right. So, and now you've given it its medicine. Yeah, I mean, we're working on trying to do it. But this is like a catalyst, man. So uh, then I don't know, honestly, what happened. But uh, I, this is just like a kind of, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, you have to share these journeys or nobody gets to learn from them. So... Then I dump in the copepods, and mm. I dump in uh, the uh, probiotic, whatever it is. Yeah. And the next day I come down, and you know one of the cherry antheas is dead, and like, well, this eye thing must Ugh. have finally got him. It's the other one, dude. Oh, not the Popeye. Like, what the hell is going on in this <laughs> tank, man? Oh, like, I, no. I'm like, I'm blowing my mind. I'm like, what the, what is going on? Oh no. 
right? And that's the day. Yeah. Sand's going in the tank. <laughs> I like, no, I'm, I'm tired of being a terrible, terrible pet owner. I'm tired yeah. of it. This thing that is going on in this tank is, I've never experienced anything like this before. Yeah. Right? Yeah. There's some things I would do totally different now that I understand it. Uh, if I wanted to go bare bottom dry rock again, uh, I probably wouldn't. I would definitely use live rock in that case. Right, but, right, right. Like, or some other solutions. But the way I did it, man, I would not do it again. Hmm. And we'll, you'll hear why in a little bit. But, like, that is it. I am tired, man, of uh, losing my pets. I'm tired of being a, pa a bad pet owner, and I'm tired of them relying on me to learn in real time. It's time to go back to the basics and get back to the things that have worked for me in the past. And to be honest, I like the way the sand looks better anyway. <laughs> well, what was the, what was the <coughs> sand going to, uh, what, what was your thought process behind, behind what the sand was gonna achieve? So the sand, I don't know. But in, in, in general, not in general, every case here, every tank I've ever set up before, other than the experiment tanks here, and, uh, and oh, I guess the ULMs. The ULMs, yeah. I all have had, you know, sand in them. They were all easy, man. Yeah. And they have, like, what do I call an ugly stage, but not like a holy cow, what, yeah. what's going on <laughs> in your stage? They all had an ugly stage. Uh, all the ones that we did bare bottoms uh, that were dry rock, all of them had bacterial blooms. Yep, yep. All of them had some garbage and dino problems and all this other stuff. The 750s, uh, bl ugly brown lasted almost an entire year. Yeah, and you had solving it with UV, solving yeah. it with uh, vibrant, solving it with this thing and that thing. Man. Uh, the ones though, the bare bottoms that started with established live rock, or even those like uh, bio bricks, yeah. like those uh, ones from like uh, Brightwell, yeah. are probably the Marine Pier one too. Like you drop that thing in, or, or let it soak in an established tank for probably a long time. Yeah, I don't, a, I don't, we don't know what date, time. but yeah. we had a Mars, all these tanks just fine. So yeah. I don't know. So anyway, sand. So now you get to see what the tank looks like with sand. All right, let's see it. Okay, so this is the day after sand goes in. Give me, start giving me your votes whether or not it looks better than bare bottom. I'd love to hear. I mean, uh, okay, so like I said earlier on, when we were just looking at the, the black bottom and the white, bone white rock. The contrast was there, you know, a white rock on black bottom. It looked really good. Now that the rock is brown, darker brown, darker colors against a darker black bottom that is also getting crap all over the bottom of it growing, uh, now the this, look at the shadows on the sand. Look at the contrast of the deep dark murky or the deep dark parts versus the well lit spots. Yeah, Kessel's giving off the shimmer I like uh, on the sand. You're seeing it on the sand. I gotta yeah. tell you, one of the other catalysts was too is my wife tells me that the tank looks like crap without sand in it. <laughs> and I'm like, I know, I, I agreed. I agreed from the beginning. It was all about this filtration yeah. and longevity conversation. But in the end, I like. I'd rather just clean the sand. <laughs> I'd rather just siphon out portions of the sand every periodically and have it in there because it just looks better. Didn't she also come down after the sand, when after the river was about like this, and say the fish look happier? Okay, so that was the other piece here actually too. <laughs> I thought the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was looking at it and the fish are swimming now in totally different areas of the tank than they were swimming in before. Yeah, they're exploring uh, they're swimming the space. All over the place. It looks so much more comfortable in there. Even non-sand sand dwelling, specifically the yellow antheas, right. uh, the Hawaiian guys. And I'm thinking that myself. Yeah. But I'm not saying it out loud because it sounds ridiculous. <laughs> <have> it. <laughs> the fish look happier? Yeah. yeah, my wife comes down and says, the fish look so much happier, Ryan. <laughs> like, oh. All right, so there are there are some things in there. We're going to show you in the next video here. Yeah, uh, it isn't perfect either, but it's all normal stuff now. Yeah, normal stuff you'd expect in a new tank. So there are areas of the tank where the sand is blown away. Right, right, right. The flow solution I have to now change right. because I only have I don't have the two power heads in the bottom because so they just blow all the sand away. Right. I'm going to have to figure out power heads on the other side of the tank now, yeah. which was an issue. And I got some ideas. I'm not going to get into that ah, yet. Okay. That'll be a whole different thing. Uh, but, uh, so there's areas of sand's blown away. There's some gunk in the sand. Yeah. There is some stuff on the rocks. You're seeing little patches of sand, you know. This is the normal ugly stage of a tank that I have <laughs> grown accustomed to and I know full well will go away. <laughs> all right, so let's see it. Uh, uh, all right, this is actually a video of what it looked like uh, this morning, or just a picture of it. And so 
Yeah, you can just kind of see, I put some corals in, some tester corals in there yesterday. Uh, if you watch Facebook, uh, uh, my channel, you'll see it. Uh, the better videos of them tomorrow. But this kind of gives you an idea again of like what the sand looks like in there. I also shot this video this morning. Again, these corals aren't open because I turned the lights on, took the video, and yep. rolled. So uh, it was, you know, 7.30 a.m. But yeah, like you can see a little bit of that gunk in the sand there. Yep. You can see some of the sand blown away. But, you know, like the rock is is largely, you know, clean-ish. You know, when well, you get close up on it, and we'll see it closer here. Think about this too what would those corals look like on a bare bottom background instead of a nice white sand background uh, yeah. especially the ones on the ground yeah, yeah i don't know you can see that cyano those little cyano patches in there oh you yeah know? Mm -hmm. uh and so like i don't know but very normal stuff to see in a new tank like now you're like oh i'm back to my roots uh, <laughs> like we'll we'll get past this one no problem uh no worry about this so i don't know uh that's kind of what you expect to see and if you could go back now to that that bare bottom shot of it the second one we see in the tank yeah uh-uh that doesn't look as good it just doesn't man and this is clean and the bare one well, this is the, when it's clean if yeah. it's dirty man and the bare bottom's not black and this the last time you've ever seen you'll ever see it black was when the lights were off very first time or now when you, it's when going you clean to be, the hell out of it yeah too. if you scrape the yeah scrape but it like getting around every little corner you start to see the blade marks and stuff yep, it sucks yeah all right, so uh, one more time. Go to the picture that I took this morning of it. And again, these are just me walking by, so forgive the last like the lesson perfection. <laughs> I got some, some corals, tester corals in there. These things go well. It's time to move forward, right? So, uh, but yeah, I'm just super happy with the sand in there. End of story, man. This was a good move for me. Yeah. Uh, for that type of tank, because you're going to go straight up mixed with it, I agree. But in my in one of my top 10, I don't agree. Okay, so now we have each of our top 10s of what we learned about sand, sand. bare bottoms, yep. ugly stage, yeah. you know, maybe a little bit of cycling mixed in there, but how all these things come together, what do we learn in the last 12 months mm. that you can learn from us, you don't have to learn for your uh, first mm. time e either. Uh, I'll let you go first. All right. My first one, and these are, I guess, not in really any order, but uh, my first one is that uh, this year was really the revelation for me that my fish are probably, or oh, definitely, the uh, largest asset to cleanup crew. And mm. my, my definition of cleanup crew is no longer that. And this, this came to fruition for me specifically in my mom's tank that I just set up a few months ago in Montana is I, we got her set up and going and the rock cycling and then we started putting fish in her tank and I, and I had her pick out um, very specific utilitarian fish, a bunch of tangs, uh, your lawnmower blending, all these different cl cleanup ones. And since I've turned the lights on in, uh, I think I was just there in February, I turned the lights on and her um, ugly brown stage has been far minimal than what it could have been otherwise. No. Yeah. And it's all because of the fish, for sure. I, I used to rely on snails heavily. Always. The cleanup crew always was, where's your cucumber, shrimp, and snails? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, for some reason, we've never talked about his fish. Mm -hmm. Silly, really, honestly. That's my revelation this all year. All right. So, uh, number one, for me, I, mean, I wrote down, I don't like the look of bare bottoms. And my number one goal is to make the tank a visual stunner. The way you enjoy the tank is with your eyes. Mm -hmm. True. It's designed to be enjoyed visually, and I don't care about some of the other benefits now. Mm. I don't like the look. I mean, I can't, I can't say I don't like the look. I like the look of sand 10x more. Okay. If sand didn't exist on the planet, I would like the look of bare bottom. Right, right, right. But if you give me the sand, I like it more. <laughs> and for that reason alone, man, I don't know. The tank is designed to be joy enjoyed visually. Mm. So that will be one, probably the primary factor for me. Yeah. Spend 17 years, when I talk about <laughs> this 34 years, or 17 more from now, I'm yeah. 100 years old, it'll be still that, I think. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm just going to skip around here, too, because a lot of mine feed off of yours, too. Uh, I also have one that says, uh, 
sandy tanks just look better. It's like, uh, it's actually that, you know, you hear all the time, that's my slice of the ocean or what have you, or my slice of the reef. Sand is included in those. In that, in that common, iconic picture of the ocean and the reef, sand is there. Mm -hmm. In most of the reef tanks I've seen, you know, growing up and, and drooling over, most of the time sand is there. So, anyway, that one's kind of 50-50, because if you actually go snorkeling and diving, quite frequently all you ever see is coral on rock. You don't really see right, a whole right, lot right. of sand in the picture. But if you're thinking about it, the sand's always in there. Picture, yeah, well, yeah, in your mind. even like, <clears throat> even pictures of it, so photo, you know, photo uh, stock pictures, or yeah. you see artwork on dentist walls, it's a sandy reef, and reef and corals. All right. So number, number two revelation for the last 12 months on in terms of all this. I will never, ever, ever do a bare bottom dry rock tank again. Hmm. Uh, now, something might change in the information structure in the next decade. That right, will, right. Like, uh, change it for me. Maybe we'll get some magic bacteria in a bottle. Yeah. Maybe there'll be some magic sand or something. Hmm. They like... I guess no sand in that case. There'll be uh, some magic solution that is developed. But for me, the hassle ain't worth it. Yeah. I, I'm unwilling to do that. I'm unwilling to harm my pets along the way. I just, I didn't like the journey. I'm not going to do it again. Mm. Now, I wrote down here, maybe even Live Rock 2. Now, I'm going to tell you out there, if you want to do a bare bottom, Live Rock's the way to go. Find some and our experience here is if you use Live Rock that's well established, you won't have any of these problems. WWC's e experience E170 also. was it. WWC was it. All of the tanks, uh, all the six uh, ORA experiment tanks with the Brightwell brick in it. Yep. All yep. that. I believe wholeheartedly if you use established biofilter, man, won't be your problem. Hmm. Right? Uh, but for me... I probably won't ever do a bare bottom tank period again because I have gone through it now. I've talked about it a lot with tanks here in the office. We've mm -hmm. done frag tanks. We've done all those things. I'd probably do a frag tank, by the way. But yeah. uh, I've done all these things. And I tried to apply that into a display in my home. In my home. Didn't work. And in my home, I like it to have sand in it. I like the way it looks. It's in my house. <laughs> I'm going to do it with sand. Awesome. So there's, there's my second one. Um, my number three is this... It, it, you know, we're talking about this. Why this mystery of well, why does live rock work way better than you know the dry rock and bare bottom? And you know, what is this? What is this mythical maturity that we like? Okay, so you want uh, you want this really awesome uh, SPS tanks? When your tank matures, things start going crazy, and I think. Uh, this mystery behind this uh, mature, the success of a mature tank, uh, which could be the mature live rock, uh, we're starting to evolve. It, it, the answer might be somewhat re or somewhere related to that biological diversity of the, the bacteria in there. So when it comes down to like dry rock, bare bottom, we're starting with uh, like like we've said, like this uh, sterile environment with hardly a diverse you know microbiome. But when I take live rock. And that has had all of that uh, for a long, long period of time. And now I throw it in a brand new tank, instant mature tank, instant success. More instant I'm success. I'm going to compound on that one. Um, uh, so did we lose the film here? No. Oh, okay. So uh, I'm going to compound on that one and say that uh, there's always been this conversation that cycling the rock isn't just about, you know, making sure there's no ammonia in the tank. Right. Right. I still don't know how to talk about it in a way that's compelling, and hopefully those uh, tests, the like those DNA tests that Colby does. Yeah. Uh, what's the name of that company again? Uh, it's all, not, not on top of my somebody head. Will, somebody throw it up there. Yep. Uh, hopefully that will shed some some light on it. But uh, it's so much more than just it's about ammonia, some ammonia, nitrate, thing, and man. phosphate. Least your concerns, actually. Yeah. Uh, so. There will, that will be one of the biggest evolutions in the next guarantee, decade guaranteed. If you look back 10 years from now and 10 years forward, you will see that this is one of those things you'll, you'll a see. A turning point. Totally different conversation about mm -hmm. how do you get a stable biome in a brand new tank. It has nothing to do with ammonia. That's the easy, stupid part. Yeah, and I mean, as we start to evolve that conversation, then we might come circle back to this 
bare bottom dry rock question. Mm -hmm. And if we have the bacterial biome to uh, seed it, we might have more success. All right. Interesting. So the third one for me here is uh, any, this is one of the things I learned again, uh, revelation. <laughs> any way can work, but they solve different issues and they have different challenges. Hmm. So having sand has, uh, solves different issues aesthetically for me, yep. but has challenges, I'll have to clean it. Right. Uh, and bare bottom, doesn't look good to me, has challenges uh, in the beginning, yeah. uh, especially dry rock, yeah. uh, but I won't have to clean it right. as much. Mm -hmm. uh, I still have to kind of suck it all up, but not the same direction. It won't pollute the tank. It won't become the tank's time bomb, or cat litter box as we call it. <laughs> um, but none of these things will be everything to everyone. Oh yeah. This debate will be on eternal because it's personal preference. Some people like the look. We had we I had this conversation. I did a training session uh, last week with customer service, and we talked about this very thing. And half of them are like, "I love bare bottoms because I can put corals all over the bottom." Mm. And I actually liked it for the exact opposite reason: the sand, because. I like that there's different contrast in, in an image. Like here's an area with open water, here's yeah. an area with rock and coral, here's an area with sand, instead of just all coral end to end. Now that's just me. I like it, the opposite. Yeah, and, and, and so half the room mm -hmm. like the opposite. I want as many corals as humanly possible. Yep. I don't want to see an inch of bare space. Yeah. <laughs> and right now half of the people watching this are like, yep, me, no, yep. not me. Yep. Uh, and, this. It will never be everything to everyone. So just know when you're having this conversation, start to tone start, in. Yeah, look at the differences. Look for the things that you really want to solve the most and solve those because all of these ways will work. Mm. You just need to know you're always going to trade off something for something else. Yeah. Uh, that, that leads into my fourth one is, uh, is I'll still go bare bottom personally, for my SPS dominated wall to wall, every single part nook and cranny is covered with some kind of stick or coral. Cause I don't give, I don't, I'm not personally looking at the bottom. I'm not looking, uh, I could care less what the bottom is. Everything from a quarter of the way all the way to the top is all I'm watching is the fish and the, uh, the aesthetic of hard corals, bright colors that don't move and wave and stuff with the fish swimming in, in and out of them. That's the aesthetically pleasing look to me. So it's not about the aesthetics of the sand, but more about, like, we, like you just said, the aesthetics of the colors, the corals, the branches, and the fish. I can't blame you. Yeah, I I'm love gonna, it. You know what it is right now? Why? I mean, this is a little bit of timely for me. Yeah. Is I can't get past the... I feel like a bad pet owner, man. Mm. I did not take care of these animals correctly. Mm. And because of that, some of them died, man. Yeah, and yeah, some yeah. of them was got this giant Popeye that reminds me every day, man, I need to do better. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so the moment I put the sand in, my whole family says, man, all the fish look better. Mm. And that was my experience is that all the sand always, you know, I never had any of these problems, man. Yeah. I cannot get past my own personal anecdotal experience that, mm -hmm. so I mm -hmm. can't do it. I agree with you why, and everybody who's successful doing it this way, yeah. understand. Yep. All right, number four. This is one thing I, I like. It's interesting, man, for me. I remember Revelation, and I probably knew this before, but also I know now. I am influenced by my mentors. There's a never ending quest here to learn more, achieve more, and sometimes fail more. The cake doesn't always turn out, and it's just as likely because I didn't, but it's likely because I didn't listen close enough, or I thought I could make a change to that cake that I couldn't. Ah. Right? So, this is a, what this really relates to is that day, the first day I walked into Worldwide Corals. Yeah. And I said, I want that for me. Oh, yeah. Right? I want to achieve what they did in a couple of these huge tanks. Yes. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. This is, this is for me. How did you do it? Give me the recipe. Yeah. Let's do it. Right? Right. Okay. And, like, Josh and Victor over there, in terms of uh, coral, uh, like, uh, care, 
absolutely mentors to me. Oh yeah, for absolutely sure. Absolutely people yeah. I look up. I can't do it as good as him. Yeah. Yeah. And so like, you know, we left there and like, man, there's a whole new array of knowledge, man, that we can add. It's like, you know, we were master chefs before, but now somebody just taught us the value of French cuisine. <laughs> like, let's incorporate right. this in here, right? Cream fraiche. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So he told me that, that uh, the bare bottoms were harder. Uh-huh. Mm, yeah, whatever. I mean, like, yeah, harder, but like, I don't care. I'm, I'm, I'll beat every day, any challenge. You know, he whatever. did, but he also gave you a, a kind of a secret ingredient that he would use to help relieve some of that. Was it the Microbacter Seven? No, it was the using live rock. Oh, using live rock. I heard that live rock thing, man, but I, it never had materialized in a normal tank for me. So yeah. I've stu every every tank I've ever owned, other than the first one, has always been dry rocks, and I'm like. Okay, yeah, whatever. Your live rock thing. Uh, I heard you, and I agree. Would it be better? I didn't know that it would be such a preventative barrier in this yep. case. Yep, yep, yep. I, I didn't know. I, I chose not to listen. I guess. Maybe it's the thing. <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, and then that's the same thing, man. Is like when you're, you know, making that master cake. Uh, you know, like it's as simple as if it said a teaspoon of baking soda and you put three in instead, it will not be the same thing. <laughs> nope. <laughs> if you chose to leave uh, the chocolate chips out of the chocolate chip cookie, man, it won't be the same thing. Or you double <laughs> or whatever. Right, you know, right. like it won't be, man. And sometimes it'll be totally, totally different thing. It doesn't rise, it flops, it yeah. folds over, who knows. Yeah. So that's one of the things I learned here, man, is I am influenced by my mentors. I want to achieve, but one of the things I should really do what I'm listening is listen to it all and then try to implement what they do, not try to mix in all my own knowledge at the same time, just yeah. something totally new. When I show up to the French cuisine, I should pretend I've never cooked anything else before in my life Start and master this thing along with them. Yep, yep. That's what it, I, I learned uh, in this last year. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Uh, number five for me, uh, I'll start getting into some of this ugly brown stuff here. Um, oh, this was a really good one this year. UV won't solve your, al uh, your ugly brown, but mm. it might make it easier to deal with later. It is just not the tool to solve an ugly brown stage. And uh, there was high hopes, you know, in some of these experiments that we just wouldn't see ugly brown because we've got the UV running and it just didn't come to fruition, but it did open our eyes to some other uh, possibilities with UV, especially when cycling a tank. So you know full well for sure it will slow down algae, it won't yep. prevent it. Yep. We know full well that in many cases of dinos it will just solve them all away. Yep. Uh, probably prevent them in yep. that case too. But it's really not that great of a preventator to like, mm -mm. I mean, I, I don't know, I, I would call it an irrelevant, actually, yeah. a preventative method. It's a tool actually to solve problems. The only one I'll say for, for sure it'll prevent is like, I guess it didn't in this case, but <laughs> every other tank that we've ever done, cloudy water. Yeah, uh, all the time. And then, I mean, I and if it's going water. to, if you're doing a bare bottom with dry rock and you know that inevitably there's going to be cloudy water, um, you can circumvent that with uh, some UV. But I would not, uh, again, going back to our testing, I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy this thing for that purpose. It's not in, I don't think it's... For the haze? Well, no, and for the, for the purpose of I think I'm going to have an easier ugly brown face. Oh, for that reason, no. Yeah. This one is an interesting one, is actually that haze question, because... A lot of people probably have like a haze in their tank that they just don't know about actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's like you look in the tank, it's almost like you can see the water a little bit and it just has kind of this haze and you wouldn't know it. It's like watching TVs at Best Buy. Like if you gave any one of them at home, I wouldn't know the bad difference between one and the next. Right. But if I look at them next to each other, definitely that one. <laughs> right. right. Uh, and uh, in this case, when you use the UV, next to one that doesn't, it's like watching that like kind of super sharp HD look yeah. instead of this kind of fuzzy, <laughs> soft look. Yeah. So I don't know, it definitely cleans up the water in that method, but yeah, mm. I don't know. All right, so number five, what I learned this year. This is kind of related to the last one. Describe hard, Oh yeah. right? Yeah, 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 so yeah. strong-willed people don't see the word hard as a deterrent. Right. Do you see the word hard as a deterrent? Never. 
never meant. Like, actually, I want to do it more. Yeah, yeah I see. I hard do. means, uh, yeah. yeah, we'll uh, do it. It gives me an opportunity to be better. Yep. Than I don't know. It's never stopped me hard. before. Yeah. Like, just beat anything with sheer willpower. <laughs> you know, right? Yeah. Okay. But the converse of that, if you detail what hard means, it will actually deter me for sure. Mm. So the word hard, no. But like, what if you tell me it's this and then this and then this and then this, and you get this laundry list of all the things that you're going to have to overcome, I might start to see that as a bigger mountain than just the word hard. Yeah. So like, if, if Josh had sat there and said, "Hey, if you use dry rock, man, expect this to actually take 18 months, not four. Yeah. And you're probably going to run into dinos. You're probably going to run in. You probably lose some fish along the way. Probably have this cloudy water and that thing and whatever. You're probably going to end up using UVs, and you're probably going to go mad." <laughs> oh, that kind of hard? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know if I want that. <laughs> check, check me out. Actually, you know another piece, man? Again, in terms of the recipe, this is actually another one. So when they're using live rock, they do that four-month cycle, mm -hmm. right? And then he says, turn the lights on, Embrace welcome the, the ugly stage, yep. it will power through the other side. Yep, 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 yep. Do it with dry rock. <laughs> oh, yeah, like, no way. You have fold. to turn it off, man. It's so bad. <laughs> uh, but, like, if you messed with the recipe, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I've actually been contemplating. I'm going to say it aloud for the first time. I don't like the hybrid method for this reason now. Because mm, essentially what we did is thought we took all the things that they did great at, at WWC. Right. And then took all the things that we do great here, and we're like, yeah, man, we'll hybridize the methods of the stuff cake. that you do at home, you know, with the stuff that you can't do there. Nobody's feeding homemade fish food by the hour over right, there. Right, right. Nobody's monitoring these tanks 24-7, cleaning them every single day. Like, you know, yeah. like, so let's bring it, use some tools that you'd use at home to, like, kind of find that hybrid thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now I'm going to tell you, man, I think all we did... Make it hard. We made a cake with three times the baking soda and none of the sugar. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Like, I, I, I mean, that's not totally true because we like the XXL 750 is going hard. We actually turned this one into basically that, mm -hmm. and they're going well. But if I were to advise somebody now, now, and like I, I learn every year, yeah, no, just follow exactly what they've done or follow a different series like the BRS 160 and follow that because that Definitely absolutely works success. and that one's repeatable for me over and over <laughs> and over true. again. Right? Yep. Uh, or the five minute, five minute guide, guide actually, because we did sand in that one. Yeah, yeah and that one actually you don't know, and the real reef two rock hours instead and, of fifty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go watch that one. Uh, yeah, and like do all the same things that we've done here over and over and over again instead of try to you know yeah do, bake your own brand new <laughs> French Italian Moroccan <laughs> cake cuisine for Can't the first even time. Sell it on the street. All right, next. <laughs> next one for me as is kind of that same realm too. Is the uh, I learned that. Even four, you know, the WWC hybrid method had uh, two and a half months of cycling and then turn lights on, embrace the brown, embrace the ugly brown. It's all part of this four month cycle. But even with four to seven months without lights on, doesn't make the ugly brown any easier. Doesn't make it any less. Doesn't make, uh, doesn't take any of the ugly brown away. I learned this in my own tank in my office. I had, it's bare bottom, it's dry rock, it's real reef branches uh, that were dried out. And, uh, you know, I, I had that tank running with just water for up to seven months before I decided to hang a light on it and turn it on. And even after that, after I had fish in there and I was feeding the fish, they were living in there for a month or so without light. I kicked the lights on and still ugly, nasty, gunky brown everywhere. So it doesn't matter how long you uh, cycle it for, you're going to run into it. You're going to run into it. All right. Yep. I'm going to actually address something now for the first time as well. It's kind of like uh, probably in some of your heads, but it's definitely in my head. Mm -hmm. All right. So some people out there are watching like, what do you mean you don't like the, the uh, hybrid method? Aren't you guys the one that did the video on this thing? <laughs> Whole like, series? How am I supposed to ever trust you when I watched this thing and believed it? Yeah. Okay. So the answer is... Nobody knows all of the answers. Mm -mm. We're all learning in real time, man, and doing the best we can. Okay, I'm flying down to Florida, filming all this stuff, interviewing all of the like, best people I can do, using all of our experience here yep. to do the best thing we can. But this is the difference between, I think, some of the information you might see elsewhere other than here. Mm. We're going to actually set those tanks up for years, follow the progress, mm. learn from it, yep. 
show our shame all over the place. Uh, yeah. The and things that we learn in real time. And then hopefully share the so success. So we can evolve the conversation. Yep. Yep. Try something new, yep. push the boundaries, find out the things, and then share it. Yeah, because so, Brent, Brendan asked, um, are you, so this is mean that you guys are going to take down the hybrid video series now? No. No. As, no, and actually, reason now, to leave it up. Well, and now that you now that we come come back to it here, almost two years into the 750 XXL, that thing is now turned around, and we're going to see that thing explode. So, hmm. uh, it was a learning curve for all of this ugly brown, the dry rock, the bare bottom conversation. This is where today's conversation came and evolved from that experience. So you know what it should be though is uh, a updated video that we can tag on because it, it is about mm. the journey, man. Yep. So the failures are just as much important as the successes. So, mm -hmm. uh, and maybe we could actually shoot a little intro video to oh, yeah. what we learned that you watch as episode zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. before you start one. the WWC series, yeah. look at these mistakes and the stuff we went through first. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. It's, it's like, I don't know. Like, I'm always afraid. They're like, oh, shame on you, man, whatever. You know, like, man. If there's anybody that can do this better than us, man, stand up because I'll let you do it. Uh, I'm just, we're just trying every day to learn something, man. And then I think the biggest value that we can do is, isn't run around and pretend we're the smartest people in the universe. It's show the successes, but also the 15 failures that came mm. along the way. Well, we, we're in a unique opportunity to have all of this uh, equipment and tanks and different ideas at our disposable uh, at our disposal to set up whenever when not really many people out there can do that is what it is yeah uh, so we're learning as as you show for you perfect to, to work man you get a raise <laughs> all right so uh, are you in, you already do number six or yeah that, that was mine. okay number six man Bare bottoms have just produced a lower percentage success rate for me, admittedly, in the first 12 months. Mm. Uh, we're not talking about 10 year thing. Yeah. So one of the things that I, I really wanted to nail down here is there are no hard truths here. Yeah. There's only I can increase or decrease the chances of any one thing. Yeah. Especially in a bare bottom tank where it's like there's about to be the like super mega of biological warfare. like. I'm gonna drop one little this bacteria here, one over here, and 16 others, and they're all gonna fight for who gets to win. <laughs> and there's all kinds of things that influences uh, all that kind of stuff that happens. You will not intent, you will not create one of those forever. Yeah. The only thing you can do is influence it. And so for me, it's uh, helpful to think about it that way. Is no matter what you do, it's all just percentage. Yeah. It's just a percentage path. You could do the perfect method of all time and still screw it up. <laughs> it's just like something decided to take hold uh, in your environment. Uh, and if I did 100 tanks, two of them would always be jacked, mm. you know? So uh, bare bottoms, though, for me, have just been lower percentage success rates, uh, but admittedly in the 12, first 12 mm -hmm. months. Yeah. Um, I've got one here that kind of feeds off of that a little bit, too. And this was something that we kind of learned on your tank, your 360, is that even even though you added uh, bacterial products uh, in the beginning, you know, down the road, the biodiversity of your tank was still limited because it ha it's getting introduced somewhere else. And not all of it is gonna, is pro from the looks of it, not all of it's gonna come from a bottle or a couple different bottles. And uh, your DNA test kind of showed that it wasn't all as diverse as your average reef tank. That didn't really come from that though. Like I, did, I started doing that after that. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, and again, I've done so many tanks where we just put the corals or the sand and the rock in and like this biological diversity conversation, you know, whatever, I don't know, I never experienced problems. Right, right, right. Like, maybe that's true, but mm. it's not true in a manner that it affects my tanks and I got, man, I got hundreds of these things now. Yeah. And between all the things we've set up here all right, around, right, right. I, like, yeah, <laughs> I don't know, not, not an issue. So. I'm going to actually uh, drop down then to one of mine. I got two of them here. Uh, where to go? Okay, Lex, actually number the uh, last one. So in the last 12 months, I am now near certain that there's something to these bottled bacteria, the mm. Microbacter 7s, mm -hmm. the uh, bacteria that have been used for decades yeah. in KZ, the Dr. Tim stuff, the Vibrant. Mm -hmm. Like, I no longer feel like they snake are oil. Uh, snake oil, yeah. special German snakes, special American <laughs> snakes, special uh, Golden Valley snakes. You know, I, I, I don't feel that way anymore. Yeah. 
and like I've seen enough to know. I've seen it from people that I trust. Uh, you know, I saw uh, Greg Carroll, you know, he used Microbacter 7 yep. to solve his dyno problem in his mm -hmm. tank. When I started dosing in my tank, it absolutely uh, took a different trajectory. Got yeah. started clearing up uh, the Microbacter 7. This is my problem with it, though. Mm. There's something to these bacteria bottles, but the unknown makes it hard for me to really buy in. Mm. I think I'm damaged goods. <laughs> Just holding on to the past? I think I'm damaged good, guys. I, <laughs> I don't know. I come from this world where when the first time somebody told me that Super Alkalinity Buffer Deluxe was just baking soda that I paid 20 bucks for a cup for. <laughs> Instant skeptic of everything. Everything. Every <laughs> yeah, and then, like, you know, I started reading all these Randy Holmes Farley articles that told me about calcium and magnesium, and then, like, all of it, man. Like, yeah. this is all... <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, yeah, you know? <laughs> and then if I couldn't see it in the bottle, and the well, people were telling me like the coral foods had nothing in them, there's yeah, just water, snow, yeah. or whatever, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, man, damn it. Well, I'm getting scammed left and right. And that's a problem, you know, that's a problem with some of these things, like the bacterias and, and like some of those amino acids and stuff is, I'm, I'm not dumping it in my tank and watching and seeing instant results. So the bacterial thing, I can't see what's going on in the tank. Uh, the you know coral foods, these all these different little bottles and stuff. Immediately, I can't see what's going on in the tank. It's no instant uh, gratification. Tank, actually. Oh well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but you know when you but when you see like the progress the progress of vibrant in, uh, across like a two month span of doing the regular dose, and you're actually starting to see some of these results. There's something to this stuff. So this is the problem, though. Yeah. This was the revelation for me in that one, too, is when he said, if it took you three months to get there, it's going to take you three months mm -hmm. to get out. Mm -hmm. That isn't human nature, man. <laughs> no. no, like, I want to use this product and have it go away now. Yeah. yeah. Like, and if it doesn't go away in two weeks, it must be garbage. <laughs> like, when somebody actually explains to you, if it took you three months to turn your tank to trash, it's going to take three months to get out. Yeah. And if it did it in two weeks, it's probably bad. And I'll tell you right now, it was. Like, in this case, I used the Vibrant, uh, and it said in the bottom of the back of the bottle, it said, for really bad infestations, you use uh, every other week. Right. My tank was that. Yeah. So I used every word. I wish I had actually done the uh, uh, light version of it, which is every other week. Oh, because, because it Because what I did is so well. it slothed off so bad, yeah. and then I killed one of my fish and gave Popeye the other one. <laughs> Gosh. Yeah, so, uh, you know, it worked too well. Yeah. Right. And so this is actually, and then, then another one is the, uh, the, the Microbacter 7. Mm. I started using that. Things start clearing up. Looks pretty good. Stop using it. Goes back south. But like, I just don't really have the belief and faith. Yeah. I'm damaged goods. <laughs> now, like, I, I, I don't know, man. If, if, I, don't, I don't have enough belief to continue using it for the next six months. Mm. It's like, it still feels like magic pixie dust to me. Yeah. It's not. I don't know which ones are best. I don't know how to use them all perfectly. But the best advice I'd give to anybody mm. is pick the ones that seem to work for other people. Yep. Try. Use them. Mm -hmm. Use them for three to six months. Yeah. Right. Use them as intended on the bottle. Well, don't be mad when it, it, it takes you, yeah. you know, uh, uh, three months to get out of the three-month crap hole you put yourself in. In fact. Be happy because if it did it in two weeks, probably bad things are going to happen. Yeah, I mean that uh, that speaks to just coming into using these products with the mindset that I'm just going to see what this is like for six months. Like I've now set my my end goal of six months. I'm not going to. My mind is already prepped that I'm probably not going to see anything, and I'm going to give it six months before I'm actually going to say, "Huh, that actually worked." Or six months later, if everything's still the same, you know what? That didn't work. Mm -hmm. But if I come into there with the expectation that it's going to take me that long, then I'm less likely to look for those instant results and, and write it off immediately. That's true. Yeah. Next. Mm. Uh, for me, uh, I mean, we've probably hit on this a couple different ways, but um, ugly, uh, ugly stage, ugly brown is inevitable. It's unstoppable so far, as much as we learn, as much as we know. But you can get lucky. We, oh, yeah, you can get lucky. Um, but that, all that does is like start to raise the question of, well, is it completely unstoppable? Or is there a solution out there that we haven't found yet 
that might actually work. And that starts to, well, let's try this. Let's try this. Let's try that. So we can actually evolve the conversation by getting rid of that hard line that, eh, it's just going to happen. Uh, don't do anything about it. You're never going to fix it. And if we question, well, is it really unstoppable? Well, maybe we start researching how to. We, try it. we tried it with UV. It, that was, wasn't the answer. Uh, we've got more experiments to try. We've got two of them, actually. Yeah. Very things we're doing right now. Yep. So we're trying the, using the Vibrant from day one. From day one. So again, yep. ounce of cure, or, or uh, ounce of prevention, yep. pound, of, pound cure of cure versus pound of cure. So if I use it from the beginning, I won't end up with slothing off garbage. I'll just never have the garbage to begin with. There you go. And that's how the owner uses it. Uh, he's local here, yep. and so he maintains a lot of really expensive mm. tanks this way. And we're going to try it. So we're doing the experiment here, so you guys can watch it. Yep. Also, we're also doing another the experiment here stuff. with uh, the uh, Ocean Direct sand that has, you know, supposedly, you know, the bacteria out of the ocean. So this stuff isn't sifted, comes out of the ocean, is moist, it's, and yep. uh, just... Yeah, it's not... The wet, the live sand mm -hmm. with the um, anaerobic bacteria that wakes up when you put it to your water. It's like starter bacteria. Potentially, it has a whole bunch of bacteria in there, but that's what we're going to find it out. says it does. Yeah. Uh, we're going to find out for sure. We're going to use the DNA testing and just uh, anecdotally watching it versus other options. You'll share it with you. We're uh, still on the we're still on the hunt to stop the ugly brown. Uh, uh, anecdotally, uh, my wife walked by the tank and said, Oh, that's so cool that the sand has all these shells in it. Because it does. It, it, it does, hasn't been sifted. So yeah. it has all these uh, cool things that uh, came out cool. of the ocean in yeah. it, too. Uh, all right. So number seven. I don't know if... You, if I, I can't wait to hear what everybody thinks about number seven. But this is a revelation for me mm. for last year. Mm. Instatank is a method. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Instatank is a method. Yeah. Meaning, we've done it here a million times. And we've, you know, most recently, the five-minute guide. Some of the most successful tanks we set up in a single day filled with coral and fish from day one. And it, and it worked. Mm -hmm. It didn't go through a bunch of okay. the, the crap. I will tell you now, I think it's the Insta tank that actually made it work. Uh, because we added the dry rock, we added the sand, and then we added 40 corals all at once. Yeah. And, and we have the ability to like change out all the water if we want or anything. Yeah, 100% water change or whatever. Move the corals you. to a different environment. Yeah. So it's like really low risk. But it always works out. <laughs> yeah. And I think, man, it's because all of that like biological diversity is actually living on the on bases the, of the corals. And then just replicates. Well, yeah. Yeah. And mm. it didn't work in tanks, SPS tanks, where it chopped off all the bottoms and only things left is the little tips, yeah. right? Yeah, yep, yep. Uh, but in a tank that's filled with, like, a, a, a frog spawn and yeah, torches and Yeah, wall hammers, hammers and, and stuff. stuff, yeah. It's mm -hmm. got a bunch of skeletal, you know, skeletal structure and tissue. Obviously, that skeletal structure holds on to a lot of that original diverse bacteria. And if the, if the tank's, like, day one... There's nothing in there to actually compete with that stuff either. That's so true. it's very likely to gravitate off of the coral and win the battle pretty rapidly. It's putting all the good stuff in there before anything has a chance to even start. So this begs the question, mm. should we develop the instant The instant take method? I, I think we'll get chastised. Heck yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> I, I think instant take is a legit method. <laughs> I, we can discuss the uh, percentages of success. Yeah. For us, super duper high. <laughs> I, I don't know. It'll be really interesting. The instant take method. That was a revelation. I of think there would be a lot of people happy with the instant take method. You well, like, I, I could have it day one. Yeah. And, and then I don't have all these problems too. Dang, that's, that's yeah. attractive. All right. Uh, another one for me is um, ah, the decision to go sand uh, isn't primarily about maintenance any longer. So I think a lot of that conversation um, specifically, so this kind of started with the ULM series, right? We debated, you and I debated in your office when we were building the ULM series on what makes your aquascape and your sand and your maintenance what makes your maintenance, uh, it's an ultra low maintenance tank. Well, how does ultra low maintenance apply to sand? How does ultra low maintenance apply to your aquascape? How does ultra low maintenance apply to your powerhead choices? All this other stuff. And we landed on bare bottom because bare bottom, uh, I don't have to clean and maintain the sand. I can use the power heads and the flow to kick up detritus, meaning I have less vacuuming and less maintenance to do. Ultimately, this ultra low maintenance approach uh, was, and the decision about sand in that time was based on maintenance primarily, more than aesthetics. 
because I want a tank that I can go to work and come back and I don't really have to do anything with. And now I think, uh, you know, over the last year, it really comes down more down to, for, for me, it comes down to more of a decision of, do I have the patience in my, in my personal choice, whether I'm going sand or bare bottom, I already know what bare, uh, what bare bottom and the, the hurdles and the trials and tribulations that I'm going to run into with bare bottom because we've now seen them all in multiple uh, tanks. My decision is, uh, do I have the patience this go around to do bare bottom and go through all those trials and tribulations and re, uh, you know, re-expose myself to those types of tanks? Or um, do I, am I picking it or am I on a path to a tank? Am I picking a tank type where uh, it doesn't require like the extreme high flow. So if I'm going to choose an SPS bare bottom tank, or if I'm going to choose an SPS dominant tank, and that's the path I'm going to go down, that's my goal, I'm going to go bare bottom. But if I want like a mixed tank, and I really want that aesthetic, you know, the sand, the rock, the contrast, that's going to be my decision factor. And maintenance now, whether I have to vacuum out my sand or not, or is not a part of my decision factor. I'm, I'm going to choose sand, going into sand, knowing that I'm going to have to maintain it. Um, mine leads right into this one. In a display tank, mm. bare bottoms are only marginally easier to keep clean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, so I started cleaning them, and I'm like, you know what? You know, scraping the bottom is actually not that much more difficult than like when I'm going to do uh, some water change, just siphon Vacuum out a little out. area mm -hmm. of it, turn it over. And yep. I'm learning you probably don't want to turn over the whole thing at once either. So I just do a, you know, you do a 10% water change turn over 10% of the sand, yeah, you know? yeah. Uh, And, you know, there's probably areas of it that are way dirtier than others, like wherever food settles out, wherever the low flow is, is where all the, mm -hmm. the gunk is, mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah, I don't know. It's only marginally. And, and worse yet, when you do clean it, it looks so unnatural because you'll use your scraper and now it will have lines and hard yeah, edges where you missed. hard edges, yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it looks so much less, much less like a natural reef and so much more like a tank of corals in your house. Yeah, and for some that's, a, that's an attractive look. Tank of corals in your house, this is a really actually good way of saying it. Tank uh, of corals in your house versus attempting to look like a chunk of the ocean. Mm, yeah. yeah, and, I, and I'm attracted oh. to the tank of corals. You know what, actually I'm gonna uh, fl flyer in here. Okay, people have talked about this before, but uh, how much light was reflected off that white sand? Oh yeah. Oh my God! Definitely man. the case. When when uh, my uh, uh, when my sister-in-law's husband came over, whenever that makes him, yeah. uh, he came over and was like, "Oh man, I can barely look at this. It's so bright." And it wasn't the day before sand, and he was right. Huh? I mean, it's so much more bright. And said so the black just absorbs the light. Yes. The white reflects it all over the place, off mm. the glass, back, mm -hmm. and it was so much. I want to put it up, up apart. I'm going to turn all the lights on because when I turned all the lights on, it just turned out that we did it right. Yeah. And that at 100% on everything, it was about 250 to 350 par in the whole Average. thing. Average. Oh, yeah. yeah. I kind of expect now to turn it on uh, and find it to be 500. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. I will see. I'll find out the answer for you guys. Uh, and somebody just asked that question, too. Does sun, the sand reflect light significantly or yes. is it a myth? No, significantly. Yeah. I, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to get you the actual numbers. But anecdotally, like, a lot, uh, to the <laughs> point that it hurts your eyes. Well, and I mean, this is even something we found in our light testing with the uh, back-painted black of the tank. And every single test at every single depth, that line of PAR measurements oh, right yeah. up against the black back wall was significantly lower, like 10% lower than any of the More. other points because the black is absorbing light. It's just what black does. I think it's like close to 25%. Yeah. So that black back on the, every single part test we've yeah. ever done, man, way, way darker so in the back. Think about the bare bottom tank, same mm. thing. Yeah, mm. all right. Uh, all right, you, I forget who went last. Uh, I think I think it's my, uh, Go for it. I think I'm at number 10. I'm yeah. bounced all over, so. Uh, one for me is, um, oh, oh, the the cleanup crew before the light's on. Um, and this is, really comes down, again, I think that was my, like my mom's tank, uh, is, was the revelation is, you know, getting these things in the tank, in my tank in the office too, mm -hmm. having these utilitarian cleanup crews in your tank before the lights come on, before you really start going to the races on embracing the brown, uh, is going to be your saving grace. Uh, and then for me, I had uh, uh, 
Okay, this is actually kind of mentioned, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through this one and I'll share another one. Dry rock bare bottom is not the same as live rock bare bottom. We should start using those terms. Mm. So when you talk about bare bottoms, we should stop talking about just bare bottoms. You should start talking about live rock bare bottom, dry rock bare bottom, because they are entirely different things, entirely different trajectories. It's baking soda, baking powder, sounds similar. <laughs> They are not. <laughs> Two completely different things. <laughs> no, yeah. uh, I'm going to throw another one out here. Okay. Cured bio bricks are a method to making a, establishing a bare bottom easier as well. Mm, so if you're going to use dry rock, I wholeheartedly believe, and it's been, been our experience, that if you had some of those uh, marine pier or uh, ceramic Brightwell. Medias, Brightwell bricks, yep. and you were soaking them in somebody else's tank for uh, six months, and then you put them in yours, your experience is gonna be way better. Oh yeah. And that's just a, you know, it comes down to that replacement for, we, we had talked about this, the amount of surface area in your sand bed is hundreds of times, maybe thousands of times fold than just the rock structure in your tank. And you know, trying to replicate that, or trying to find that in a bare bottom, you're already putting yourself behind, you know, you're, you're putting yourself behind by not having as much. Um, as an alternative, we only tried the, your trays, and mm -hmm. uh, probably, yeah, a, probably like percentages of what should have been there I mean, for Ter the same Terrence purpose. Terrence actually said very, very well. I, I showed Terrence what we had done. Yeah, and he's like, "Oh, that's cute." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because I, I, what is I, it going to do? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll put in here another one. Uh, I had this is an aspirational one that I learned this year. And this isn't uh, something I really learned, but this is something I want to try. And we're, mm -hmm. again, we're going to do these uh, experiments. I hope to learn that Oceans Direct has legit value. Wouldn't it be awesome in a world where live rock has largely gone away if legitimate live sand was a solution? Mm, yeah, we're going to find out. I don't, don't want to read the packaging. Again, I think I'm damaged goods. I'm really, I realize every, <laughs> every, every moment that goes by. Uh, I just uh, doubt everything until, uh, until it's proven. Mm. Uh, all right, so I wanted to share a, a one thing in here. You, you heard a lot of our failures here, and even some new ones that, uh, I don't know, it's kind of been in our heads and we added them. Yep. All right, you've heard this one a million times. Oh yeah. But this thing here is what I'm gonna share with you, man. It's been an inspiration to me to out the failures, and I'm actually hoping that it's an inspiration to all of you as well. Share your failures because they're almost always more uh, valuable to other reefers than the successes. It's what, don't do this because it will mess you up. It's often so much more valuable than do this because we didn't really hear. Yeah. And I'm gonna do most of that, but I'm gonna go do this other thing too. I don't hear your top 10 tips the same way I hear your top 10 failures. Yeah, where did you misstep and you would, if you could share this with somebody, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it'd be really valuable to them and also, if you're brave enough to go try new things, like share you know, those own failures. it, share yeah. them, man. Yeah, like, yeah. If, like, you're, if you're that pioneer that we always say, hey, if you're a pioneer, pioneers usually, you don't get shot in the back, but they find you know, green pastures. Uh, those pioneers that are getting shot in the back should probably, needs to share that information. It's human nature though, sadly, to hide all of our failures and oh, not yeah. show them to anybody, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, one of the things, I get, I get little inspirational quotes, it, and you, you, want, you may have seen this in one other video. Uh, ah, yeah. uh, I get these inspirational quotes, and they change the trajectory of my life, because I finally understand something in a way that is powerful to mm. me, and I share it with others and do the best I can to live up to it. The more <laughs> I say it, the more I want to live to it. So I'm going to share it with you guys today. Okay. Uh, this is Theodore Ro Roosevelt's yep. Dare Greatly, mm. right? So uh, uh, Brene Brown did a thing on this. That's yep. where I actually first found it. But then I saw, Vulnerability, yeah. yeah, Dare Greatly, Theodore Roosevelt. For all those people out there that are willing to fail on the, our behalf and willing to share it on our behalf, this is what it is. It's not the critic who counts. Not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who's actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust, sweat, and blood, who strives valiant, who er valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, who at best in the end knows the triumph of high achievement, but at worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly. Mm. 
makes me want to be this person. <laughs> it makes me want to fail. It makes more. you want to fail. Oh yeah. It makes me want to be the I, biggest failure. Where can I go mess man. up? <laughs> uh, but yeah, like if you're yeah. not willing to do that, man, it's unauthentic. Yeah. And it's not real. So share the failures. We'll all learn from mm. them. And that is what we've learned in the 12, last 12 months. I mean, that's a, that's a good question to go ask. You know, we always say, uh, listen to somebody instead of everybody. That mm. mentor that you're, that you're looking at, your probably most beneficial question that you could ask that mentor that you're talking to is, all right, so that, that looks great. What was the failures that brought you to this point? Tell them, share with me the, the tribulations and trials and the errors and the things that you learned the hard way to get you where you are, not the secret recipe to success. I, uh, it's a secret recipe, you're gonna still fail. The authenticity yeah. and the real piece will be in there. Actually, we were, in a, uh, we were hiring another video editor, we were doing interviews today, yeah. and we started asking the Elon Musk question, which <laughs> is, what is the biggest challenge you've run into and how did you solve it? Mm -hmm. And the goal here, when you ask that question, is to find out, you know, I can hear as somebody's going through it, whether or not they've actually done this before. Right, right, right. And so they can tell you they did all these tasks like a, or whatever, yeah, yeah. right? And like, yeah, I've done this, I've done that, or whatever. But if you ask what the biggest challenge or failure they've had and how they came, overcame it, you get to see the inner workings of how painful it was. Mm -hmm. You get to see the inner workings of how the different challenges they solved it. Yeah. And actually, it's so funny this comes up because right in the middle of it, the guy was telling me, you know, like, uh, Dave, uh, Ed, Randy, this is what he just said. He just said, man, I'm okay with failure. I was okay with failure in front of uh, his professor at yep. the time. Yep. And on the other side of it, man, we achieved great things. Yeah. That's what he said. He, <laughs> was, he was not only afraid, of, he was not afraid of failure the first time, the second time, or the third time but he was so embracing of his failures that he could go to his professor and say, I messed up, what can we do? And the only thing the professor could say is, here, try again, try yeah. again. So, hey, do you wanna link them to Brene Brown? Ah, we'll do that today, you want, that'd not? be fun. Yeah. Embrace your vulnerability, uh, learn something uh, about uh, all that, yeah. dare greatly. Dare greatly, We'll be link vulnerable. it over here. Go uh, see Brownery Brown. I'm also gonna put a little uh, in the cards, like sand or no sand. You guys can vote and decide uh, uh, yeah, which cool. one that you think is cool. Uh, but we'll see you next week. Next week, This one's guys. been fun. See ya. <laughs>